Okay, hello everyone. This is uh, Langley's Read. First half FY twenty twenty four financial results, dated first February twenty twenty four. Right, we'll look at their key performance. Okay, gross revenue up eighteen percent, net property income up twenty two point two percent, uh, distributable income down twelve percent year on year. Uh, this mainly due to their interest, uh, costs going up. Right, distribution per unit, which is what investors of rich should care about, is down fourteen point five percent. Right, though this is quite a bad drop. Right, gearing ratio, uh, forty point five percent, but we'll see later it's actually closer to fifty or fifty one percent. Right, average cost of weighted debt is three point three seven percent, but again I say this is deceptive. I think it's higher than this. Right, interest coverage ratio is closer to two percent. Right, so these numbers are not very uh, uh good or accurate. Right, fixed borrowing cost is sixty one percent, which is lower than what we see in other, uh, established REITs, which normally hovers around the eighty percent. Some some people even have eighty five to eighty eight percent, uh, fixed rate borrowings. Right, so yeah, so key portfolio matrix tenant sales is up point six percent, which not very impressive. Right, retail rental revision is up fifteen point seven percent. Right, so this one bright spot lah in their performance. Right, the rest nothing much to say. Right, uh, this is the part where we have to actually account for, uh, the fact that these numbers may be bloated up. Right, so the rev they admitted gross revenue increase seventeen point nine percent mainly due to improved operational performance from the retail malls. Right, which is fine. Right, but the second part of recognition of supplementary rent from the lease structuring with Sky Italia in Milan, right? So if we exclude the supplementary rent recognized in advance, right, which means that, uh, this money they are supposed to collect later, but they collect now, right? Gross revenue increased by five point one percent instead. Uh, that means that the supplementary rent is something like twelve percent, <laughs> right? So of this seventy percent, twelve percent is money that they are supposed to get later, but they are getting now, right? So this number. If we do not include that value, it's going to be much closer to this number than uh is reported lah. It's actually only five percent greater than this number, right? Which meant which means that maybe DPU will have shrunk more, <laughs> right? So this fourteen point five percent drop in DPU, uh, might be artificially propped up this time round, and we may have to worry that in the second half, uh, the drop will be worse. All right. Okay, the main reason for drop in DPU is due to higher borrowing costs, right? Amidst the higher interest rates as compared to a year ago, right? So everybody suffering from this, but uh, their drop is quite substantial, lah, and more so given what we have discussed earlier, right? Okay, anyway, let's go to the balance sheet, right? So we have a look at, uh, quickly, yeah. So there's a little bit more, uh, shares now than half a half a year earlier, right? So that's one of the reasons why they say NAV is lower, All right? So anyway, let's look at the debt profile, right? So no refinancing until FY twenty twenty five, but this is where we worry, All right? Uh, later on we'll see why. Right, approximately sixty one percent of borrowing hedge to fixed rates, right? Uh, this is not very high, lah. Okay, so uh, there's a bit of a worry for this. Uh, so if interest rates don't fall soon, right? Uh, their performance might suffer even more, right? And if we look at uh, the gearing ratio. Uh, why did I say this is not very accurate? Right, it's because of something to do with this. Right, so they have actually perpetual securities. Right, so what what are perpetual securities? They are actually debt. Right, so they have two hundred million of debt that they took on at a four point two percent interest rates. Right, uh, this was somewhere in twenty twenty one. Right, and there's another two hundred million that they took on at five point two five percent. Right, this somewhere in twenty twenty two, right, which is self expected like, because interest rates I think went up by net already. Right. So uh the reset date is the worry, right? So the first set of perpetual securities, the reset date is in twenty six. So that that one we can worry about later. Although with if interest rates stay high as per it is now, right, uh we expect this four point two percent interest rate to hit six percent, which is quite bad. But at least this one we have two more years to worry about it, or two point five years to worry about it. This is the one that is a little bit more concerning, right? So at in the eleven April twenty five, right, uh, this interest here, the second two hundred millions five point two five percent is going to hit six percent, right? So, uh, this, uh, will worsen their performance, lah. We already know they are struggling with their uh, debt on their balance sheet, right? So on their balance sheet, they already have debt, 
right? Which works is which which is what contributes to this gearing ratio. However, right, this debt, right, which they call perpetual securities, right, because it's called securities, right, they actually don't put it on the debt aspect of the balance sheet, right? But this is really debt, and they are really paying cash to pay off this interest, right? So this, firstly, uh, the problem is this debt isn't uh, recorded here. So if you put those $400 million worth of debt inside, this one is closer to 50%, 50 right? The gearing ratio is actually 50% or 50.1%, all right? And if you look at the weighted cost of debt, it's definitely higher than this, right? Because again, I, I believe they do not count this as uh, part of the, uh, they do not include the perpetual securities debt inside here, which clearly is a higher value, right? 4.2% and 5.25%. And interest coverage ratio in reality, right, because of the additional debt from perpetual securities is something like 1.9%, right? I think this is their true interest coverage ratio, which means that according to MS regulation, their gearing ratio cannot cross 45%, right? So only if your interest coverage ratio is above 2.5 times, then your gearing ratio can hit 50%, right? So if we had considered the perpetual securities as part of their gearing, gearing ratio, right, uh, they might have they might have already crossed the 50% mark, <laughs> all right? So this is an accounting trick, all right? But uh, it is a real concern, especially when it gets closer to this date, right? Right, 11 April 2025, right? So if interest rates, I would say even six months before these dates, right? I think the market will look at this uh, batch of debt. And if interest rates haven't fallen by then, which is something like October, yeah, probably October 24, right, this year, uh, I think the market will price in that this interest rate will highly likely jump to this, right? And even if it drops slightly, right, interest rate drops slightly, it may not be enough, right? So this is the worry for Landis Reed, right? Uh, I'm not going to say too much about the rest. I think that sort of uh, uh, discusses the main concerns I have with it, okay? I still think the assets are very strong and uh, in terms of execution on the ground, it's a good read, right? The major worry at this point is just their debt. Right, with that, I'll end this presentation. Thank you for your time.